Hi, welcome back to Chem with Go. This is Mr. Go. Today we're going to take a look at some exceptions to the octet rule uh, when we're looking at uh, simple molecular geometry. And this happens to be steric number five. And the first molecule under the steric number five um, category would be this molecule shape called trigonal bipyramidal. Now note that these uh, steric number five molecules will always be exceptions to the octet rule because what happens is there's actually 10 total electrons around the central atom. And just to mark it, okay, right here is the central atom, this brown molecule or brown atom that you see right here in the middle. And as if we can, uh, let's just take a look at it really quick. So here's one bonding area, two, three, four, and five down there. So now that we've established that this is an exception to the octet rule, let's take a look at how to draw this and the bond angles between all of those different uh, bonds. So one example would be a molecule such as PF5. Now note this is a uh, covalently bonded molecule. The name would be phosphorus penta because there's five, and then it would be fluoride. So that would be the name of the molecule, phosphorus penta fluoride. Now, uh, how do we actually uh, put this molecule together, and how do we draw this uh, using the wedge and dash method? Well, let's identify the locations of some of the fluorine atoms. So here's a fluorine atom right here. Okay, and this will have one, two, three lone pairs around it. And here's another one right here. One, two, three lone pairs around it. Now note that the bond angle between these two is 180 degrees. So this, to go from here to here, is 180 degrees. And we call these, the positions of those two fluoride atoms that we've just identified right there, we call them the axial positions. And what I want you guys to think about is if we had a planet and it was rotating on an axis like this, those fluorides, or fluorines, I'm sorry, are actually on those axes right there. Okay? So, again, those are the axial positions, and they happen to have a bond angle of 180 degrees. Now let's take a look at the other positions in this simple molecule. Let's try a different color. So here's another fluorine atom right here with three lone pairs, another fluorine atom coming out towards you, and this will be the one with the wedge. Okay, and then here is another fluorine atom right here in the back, and this is the one with the dash, which symbolizes that it goes into the board. So remember, these are three-dimensional structures. So what do you call these positions right here? Well, the bond angles between each one of these three fluorine atoms right here, if you actually take a look at it from the top, it's 120 degrees. And think about a circle, again, being divided into three equal parts, so one, two, and three. And each one of these arcs is 120 degrees, right here. And the name of this position is called the equatorial. Okay, so these uh, fluorine atoms are in the equatorial position. Now, this is very important, and the one I want you guys to remember, that when we are creating derivatives of a steric number five molecule, or a trigonal bipyramidal molecule, we always take atoms out from the equatorial positions before we remove them from the axial positions. Okay, let me repeat that. This is really important. So if we're going to go ahead and form other structures or uh, substitute each one of these fluorines with lone pairs, for example, um, we always take out the fluorine atoms or these equatorial atoms out first before we take out any of the axial atoms. Okay. Um, now that'll make a whole lot more sense again when we take a look in depth at other steric number five molecules. So just watch out for another video in the near future. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and draw this. So how do we draw this using the wedge and dash method? Well, here's the phosphorus right here, and I'll go ahead and draw the circle. I'll go ahead and create the fluorine atoms. So here's a fluorine, and here's another fluorine. Okay. I'll put one in the plane of the board right here, and then one wedge coming out this way. So this will be this fluorine right here. And the last fluorine will be in a dash or a dotted 
uh, bond right there and it goes into the plane of the board. So there is your trigonal bipyramidal structure, phosphorus pentafluoride. Again, let me just identify again, these are the axial, I'm sorry, the equatorial positions right here, and the axial positions are written in red. All right, and that's it for today. Let's uh, watch out for some additional videos on steric number five, and we'll talk to you soon.